All right, guys. I want to show y'all two new beats that I'm working on at the moment <clears throat> that I'm actually creating. And they're through the use of paradiddle and dynamic, which is what I've been studying from previous videos and what I've always been into and stuff. I'm going to use a kit called Dry Honk because it's got a bit of a drier snare. And uh, the toms don't refer about too much, and the bass clicks pretty cleanly. Even though it's not the strongest bass, it gives you a very even sound. I finally got the calibration of the hi-hat to be pretty good, where I can close it down slowly, and I can also close it down fast, into a click. So, uh feels a little bit more like a hi-hat shoot, and I've always been having a hard time with that. Yeah, so, okay, the first beat that I made is by using dynamics. So I'm going to play the beat first, and I'm going to explain the beat. The idea is to take a very simple beat and make it seem a lot more complicated than it is and make it sound like it's coming from all sorts of different ranges of sounds when it's really only coming from two drums and some, you know, one, one drum and one cymbal or two drums. It's only coming from two areas. Now the idea is um, when you learn how to uh, roll and double stroke on your hands cleanly, you start to learn the technique that allows you to, to rebound your hand using only your fingers without actually doing wrist movement, which is when you bring the stick down, the stick comes up, and you smack it down with your fingers. But you can apply this dynamic to cymbals as well. Now, cymbals work a little bit differently than drums do because... You don't have to hit a cymbal using the head of your stick. You can also hit a cymbal uh, on the anywhere in this front area of the stick, which is why the stick is shaped like that, so you can get good rebound off of it while getting a more cleaner, stronger hit on your cymbal without doing as much wrist work because you're getting more weight onto the cymbal. So that allows your crashes to sound really, really nice. Even though this is an electronic kit, I'm practicing real acoustic techniques so that I can hone up my skills and get the proper handwork. but you know you can get really loud crashes even in your ride you can get a really loud zing from it simply by hitting the stick not with the tip but on the rim head like this as opposed to you can hear the difference you can also apply it to any of the symbols. Now if you apply that technique of doing those kind of rebounds with this, in which you hit the stick, lift your hand up, and rebound it down so that only the head hits, you get an accented hit followed by a descented hit. Now, you can use this dynamic into a beat to make something that sounds very plain. Suddenly become dynamic. Notice how there are three main accented hits. These, you start the beat by building up. So I'm building up. Then accenting. Now when 
I apply this to other cymbals, I get the same effect. Now, if I take those three accented hits, and I also bring the hi-hat down when I'm on another cymbal, the hi-hat creates that little sound. And you incorporate this into all of your beats once you become expert enough and dynamic enough to be able to coordinate both legs at once. You'll notice that um, if I add that sound while doing my accent that hits, it just pops out the high end of the sound just a little bit more. Now, to the natural ear, you really won't hear it or notice it, especially since you're listening to it on a camera through speakers over here, which are next to my TV. So you're probably, it's barely even audible, but it makes a difference when you're studio recording music. And it really, really punches out the high end of your cymbals just a little bit more so you can create accents both dynamically and functionally with your physical limbs. Make sure that the camera is still running. It is. We're good. All right. Now the second beat is going to take a little bit longer to explain because it's very complicated. I'm going to divide it into four sections and explain each of the sections thoroughly. The final beat is going to sound like this. probably going to be the most difficult to learn. It doesn't sound that way because I'm doing a lot of dynamic stuff with my left foot with the hi-hat throughout the entire beat and it just you might think at first oh there's no way I'm going to coordinate the feet but the feet come after you learn the handwork. The handwork is what's actually a little bit more complicated. Normally it's important to understand footwork first because it's the basic but um the way that I am incorporating this beat is going to place the footwork at the end. The beat is like so. Playing starts in succession in a 4-4, four, four. you know, playing to that standard signature, but then the fill at the very end is a triplet, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a six hits, which is a set of like two triplets, which would normally be one, two, three, one, two, three, and then go, but instead it starts on the left, alright, but I'm going to start from the beginning. Uh, I was explaining the idea of double strokes. Now, let's go over what a single stroke is. Right, left, right, left. One, two, one, two. Now, let's explain what a double stroke is. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. One, one, two, two. One, one, two, two. Two strokes. Double stroke roll. If we combine a single stroke roll into a double stroke roll, 
we get what's called a paradiddle. The reason why it's called paradiddle is because a diddle is a double stroke roll. That's called diddling the sticks. It's kind of like a nuanced term. Now, a paradiddle is the combination of a single stroke roll with that diddle. Paradiddle. So, single stroke, double stroke. Single stroke, double stroke. One, two, one, one, two, one, two, two. An easy way to remember this is to listen to the song Vaseline by Stone Temple Pilots. Temple Pilots. By Stone Temple Pilots. Sounds something like that, you know, that kind of a beat. That's a paradiddle. The entire song is based off of a paradiddle beat. Okay, so the first measure is a play on a paradiddle, but only with the right hand. So a paradiddle would normally sound like this. But what I'm doing is one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two. So you can think of it as one, one, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, 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 two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two. Okay? That's the first measure of the four measures that are in the entire beat. Second measure is a standard paradiddle. Third measure is repeat of the first measure. Fourth measure is the first half of a paradiddle. It's the first half of the paradiddle, so it's the first four hits. And before that left hand goes down, we enter that uh, set of double triplet, that, that sixth triplet there, which is basically just a triplet beat. Okay, the way that's done is, since you're starting on the left hand, and you want to get back to ending so you can start again the next beat on the right, we're going to do a single stroke on the left, double on the right, and then now we're back into the motion to finish off the triplet and start again. So that's the paradiddle. So I'm going to play the whole thing out so you can see the hand work on two different drums. Faster. The, uh, the sticks clash, but you get the idea. We're going to take that, we're going to apply it to the cymbal and the snare with the hands crossed like you would on a traditional sit. Now that we've got the hands down, how do you incorporate the feet? House music. How do you play a house beat? Kick, up, up the hi-hat, close the hi-hat while hitting the snare, and then up the hi-hat again. And then before you start over, you kick while closing the hi-hat. to think about it is boots and cats. Cats, boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats. That's, uh, that's all house and dance music. That's the beat work that lays out the foundation of most house dance and electronic music, even dubstep. So we're going to take that footwork and we're going to apply that hi-hat pedal work into that original beat.
dynamic with it and go anywhere around the kit. You can bring it to your, your crash. That's the beat. And those are the two pieces I came up with today that I love very much and I will use forever.